Hello, investors. Welcome to the podcast for the month of April. I know too much is going on in asset markets as well as there have been certain tax changes. So we'll focus on that at this point in time. So to begin with, I know that no one likes paying taxes. But when you look at the big picture, sometimes it just makes sense. What we're trying to say is you should not try to optimize your investment decisions too much for taxes as that could suboptimally skew your risk return characteristics of your portfolio. If you need to sell an investment to protect principal, the tax issue should be irrelevant. So finding great investments is hard work and keeping them through the ups and downs is a worthy but difficult goal. Don't let the potential tax consequences lead you astray when it comes to making investment decisions. Tax planning is an integral part of financial planning but should not be the key driver of investment decisions. With that background, let me now turn to the new recent tax changes that have been announced. So what happened was uh, the Finance Bill 2023 has now removed the long-term capital gains tax benefit on debt mutual funds, meaning funds that are taxed with a debt taxation with effect from 1st April 2023. So currently, if an investor holds debt mutual funds or funds that are taxed as debt for more than three years, they were paying 20% tax with indexation benefits on long-term capital gains. From FI 23-24, this is the current fiscal, capital gains from funds attracting debt taxation will get added to your income and marginal tax rate will be applicable, irrespective of your holding period. Should that change your asset allocation or the way you invest? Before you take a call, please remember asset allocation decides more than 90% of the variability of returns from your portfolio. Hence, stick to your asset allocation and determine if the invested vehicle still has merits for consideration in your portfolio. So if you look at the few funds that quantum offers so within that if you look at what is the merit that each one brings to the table let's look at the debt funds first so for debt products what has happened is this change has made it a level playing field with other fixed income instruments when it comes to taxation it's not become a disadvantage the earlier advantage that these debt funds had has been taken out so it will be even from a tax perspective or the tax rate will be same, one should look at the merits of each investment vehicle and then decide. For example, let's look at the quantum liquid fund. The quantum liquid fund still remains a good market-linked investment option for parking short-term surplus cash or emergency fund allocation. It offers high liquidity and minimal credit risk through a diversified portfolio issued by or debt instruments issued by government and government-owned companies. It has a track record of generate, generally delivering better returns than bank saving accounts with limited market risk and offering daily liquidity. Investments can be redeemed at any time at one day notice and there is no penalty. A diversified exposure of sovereign and quasi-sovereign debt reduces investors' credit risk exposure compared to investing in a single bank. The fund will still score over bank fixed deposits from a tax perspective as interest on bank deposits is taxed on an accrual basis, which negatively impacts the compounding process. On the other hand, returns from the fund will be taxed only at the time of redemption. So if you look at these details, the liquid fund still emerges as a better option to your saving bank accounts, which was the objective in the first place. Uh, if you look at the quantum dynamic bond fund, it still remains a good market linked investment option for long term fixed income asset allocation. It offers high liquidity and minimal credit risk through a diversified portfolio of debt instruments issued by government and government owned companies. Uh, if you look at quantum dynamic bond fund or QDBF offers an all weather fixed income solution by actively managing the interest rate risk. Investments, again, can be redeemed anytime at one day notice. Unlike fixed deposits, there is no penalty for a premature withdrawals. Also, a diversified portfolio of sovereign and quasi-sovereign debt reduces investors' credit risk exposure compared to investing in a single bank. So uh, overall, the fund still scores over banks' fixed deposits, given even here, where fixed deposits are taxed on a cruel basis, which will impact your compounding process. Here, it is only taxed at the time of redemption.
Coming to the multi-asset fund, which we think is a great product for anyone who wants to earn a better return than fixed income instruments by taking a little risk. It's a market-linked alternative. It still remains one. If you look at the track record, it has generated better returns over long time frame over bank fixed deposits, uh, which means on a net of tax basis, it could still generate alpha or bank deposit returns as now both are taxed at the marginal tax rate, given that if you uh, if it continues to outperform, then probably despite the tax changes, it could still give you that added return that you're looking for while taking minimal risk. The fund will also score our uh, bank deposits from a tax perspective, as again here, uh, fixed deposits are taxed on an accrual basis, which negatively again impacts the compounding process. And on the other hand, here you are taxed only at the time of redemption. Coming to the equity fund of fund, uh, you should look at the merit of investing in such an uh, uh, investment vehicle because it will continue to be a good choice for investors on account of the various benefits they offer, such as Firstly, the research back fund selection, regular rebalancing, tax efficient rebalancing, because each time when the fund buys and sells uh, funds, they do not pay any capital gains. So it is a very tax efficient rebalancing, uh, diversification with limited capital, convenience of one investment to track. Uh, so all those benefits do not go away. Coming to the gold funds, the quantum gold ETF and quantum gold saving fund, uh, it will still continue to be a good choice for investors wanting to take exposure to gold on account of the purity, liquidity, provision for doing SIPs and accumulating over a period of time, and the import, most importantly, the price efficiency that brings to the table compared to other alternatives. Given gold is a great portfolio diversifier, along comes the need to rebalance the portfolio and therefore Gold ETF, gold saving funds emerge as the best option as, as they provide high liquidity to carry out the rebalancing transactions very, very easily without any impact costs. So uh, overall, if you look at the uh, merits, they are still very much intact. So for investors who have already invested before March 31st, 2023, there is no impact as capital gains before that have been grandfathered. The tax rule changes only for new investments made after April 1, 2023. So our understanding is that tax changes have been implemented mainly to eliminate the tax arbitrage between fixed income instruments like debt mutual funds, bank fixed deposits, etc., making it a level playing field. Thus, we are hopeful that the ministry would review and take corrective action to reduce the collateral damage and exclude from this new tax purview uh, great products like gold ETFs, gold fund of funds, other fund of funds, and international funds, which are incorrectly bundled under the debt funds umbrella from a taxation perspective. We intend to make representation in this regard. While taxation is important, we strongly believe that it shouldn't be the sole determinant of your investment mix. Striking the optimal risk return portfolio is extremely important. We'll always be mindful of risk return characteristics of our offerings. And within that framework, we will try to give investors with more suitable and to the extent possible tax efficient offerings. However, at this stage, till further clarity emerges, we request you to stay put with your investments and trust that we will take steps in the best interest of our investors. With Indian equity markets poised for good returns over the medium term, driven by supportive domestic fundamentals, they are prone to external vulnerabilities. Debt looks set to benefit from the turn in interest rate cycle. We just saw a pause from RBI. Conditions for gold look supportive as money, as monetary policy tightening comes to an end and economic conditions remain fragile in an external world. As such, asset allocation continues to be a sensible strategy. Choosing funds or asset classes solely on the basis of taxation can be counterproductive for your investments. With that message, I'll sign off for this month and will come again next month. If you have any queries, please do write in to us and we'll make sure we respond to all your queries. Thank you.
Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.